well, hello, God bless you today. Welcome, thank you for joining me on here. Today I want to pray, I want to teach, preach, prophesy, whatever. I'm going to pray, I want to build up, I'm going to encourage. I'm so glad to be able to join you on here for another episode that we can join together in the Lord and be built up, be encouraged, be strengthened, be refreshed. We just, I just thank you for joining me, and uh, this is Emily Funk with Hope for Eternity Ministries. You can find me here on YouTube and subscribe to this channel, support this channel by sharing this video so we can break algorithms in YouTube and get this video out there so that it can be a blessing to others in the body of Christ. You can find me on Facebook at Hope for Eternity Ministries. You can email me with questions or prayer requests at info dot hope for eternity at gmail.com and that is the number four in there or you can find me on instagram at emily funk and uh all that is in the descriptions and today i want to pray against some things right now we are in october we know halloween's coming up it is a witchcraft season and if you haven't discerned it if you haven't discerned something going on or feeling more resistance that's what's going on there's witchcraft in the air and we need to stay prayed up. And we need the Holy Spirit. <laughs> we need the Holy Spirit. We need God. We need Jesus. We need a sanctifying work of Jesus Christ. We need the covering protection of God. We need the Holy Spirit. We need the truth. We need the river to keep flowing in us. And so that's what I want to pray about today. God put it on my heart. We need to tap into uh, turning on the spigot of the living water uh, from the throne room of God. We need to turn on that living river, that living water. We need to let it flow in our lives. We need it to be released. Again, we need to be refilled and filled up. And so uh, that's what I want to pray into. I want to read a couple verses because Psalms, if you read in Psalms, there are always some good verses, good references that, um, you know, you can pray into. David poured his heart out in the Psalms with prayers and supplications and thanksgivings and even warfare scripture prayers. And so they're great to pray from. And right now, we just need to tap into what God is wanting to do. We need to push back some darkness because the enemy wants us to dry out. He wants us to become barren. He wants to delay us and derail us. And I'm not, I'm not wanting to glorify the enemy, but you know, there are times we need to pray against the enemy. We need to uh, see what the enemy is doing so that we can war and come out victorious and not just let whatever he's doing happen. Because if we ignore some things sometimes, then those things, they go ignored and unchecked. And next thing we know, we don't know why what is happening is happening and how that happened. <laughs> Sometimes it's because of complacency. Okay, so hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I just want to throw this out there right now because this is coming to me real quick before we get started on praying. Acts, I can't remember uh, what chapter it is, but when Paul... And they're preaching, and they're, uh, I, I didn't even look this, this just came to me, I didn't even look this up to, to refresh my memory. <clears throat> but they had the slave girl following them, I think it was in Ephesus, uh, somewhere over there. If I got it wrong, please forgive me. But you know, it's an axe. And the slave girl is following them, <clears throat> and saying, these are the uh, men who preach God, Mo you know, the Most High God, they're preaching about God. And she followed them for days. And if you read the chapter, and I suggest you do, you know, Paul, Paul started to discern that something was off. He started to discern and it started aggravating him and irritating him. And so he finally turned around and cast this demon out of this girl. And it was a spirit of pythos. And if you look that up, it actually is interpreted as divination. It was a spirit of divination. And her masters made money out of her. Now, if you research spiritual uh, things, you, you look into some of these things, you understand the spirit of Python, the spirit of Python is a spirit that will try to constrict the flow of the Holy Spirit. It will try to constrict what God is doing. It will try to take the life breath of God and the movement of the Holy Spirit. It will try to just constrict it out of your life and snuff it out. That, that's what that it tries to work and do. And right now, with it being October, 
most certainly there's a lot of divination going on. <clears throat> and so we have to press into prayer, and we have to press. We have to pray. We have to stay prayed up. We have to worship. All right? And I'm sharing this because it's important to understand the tactics and the strategies of the enemy, right? The word says to be uh, wise, know the devices of the enemy. And so that's what we need to do. We need to understand. Sometimes we need to be able to see the enemy because as, as Jennifer LeClaire says, an enemy exposed is an enemy defeated, right? And God says that we are to walk in his victory. So we need to walk in his victory. And sometimes that means acknowledging, seeing, uh, understanding, studying some of these things, and then activating our faith to come against some of these things. So let's just pray in the Holy Spirit. Because we will not be tamped down, we will not be dampened down, we will not be snuffed out, we will not be put down into a place that God has not called us to be put in, right? Hallelujah. So Lord, we just give you all honor, all glory, all praise, Father God. That you are the one true king. You are the only God. You are the only God. You are the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And we praise you, God. We praise you, God. We praise you, God. We praise you, God. And we thank you, Father God, that we can be in a place where we can love you, where we can worship you, where we can be filled with you again and again. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father God, that your eyes are on us. Your eyes are on the righteous, God. But your face is turned from those who do wicked and those who do evil in your sight. But your your eyes are on us, God. Your hand is there holding us up, God. You lead us and you guide us. You surround us and you hem us in with your love. Hallelujah. Psalm 52 says, <clears throat> now this is speaking to wickedness, right? Some of this is speaking to uh, evil people. David's speaking about e somebody evil, but we're going to, we're just going to say this is to the evil, the evil, uh, the enemy, wicked powers. You call yourself a mighty man, a big shot. Why do you boast in the evil you have done? Yet God's loyal love will protect me and carry the day. Listen, O deceiver, trickster of others. Your words are wicked, harming and hurting all who hear them. You love evil and hate what is good and right. You would rather lie than tell the truth. You love to distort, devour, and deceive using your sly tongue to spin the truth. But the Almighty will strike you down forever. He will pull you up by your roots. The godly will see all this and will be awestruck. Then they will laugh at the wicked, saying, See what happens to those great in their own eyes who don't trust in the Most High to save them. Look how they trusted only in their wealth and made their living from wickedness. But I am like a flourishing olive tree anointed in the house of God. I trust in the unending love of God. His passion towards me is forever and ever in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. That is some good verses. So we are like flourishing olive trees, anointed in the house of God. We trust in the unending of love of God. His passion towards us is forever and ever. And even though the, 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 the people right now that work the witchcraft, the satanic agents that are out there that are being used by the enemy to cause people to trip and stumble and fall, and even the enemy himself who's plotting and planning and trying to scheme and devise ways to trip up, derail and delay us, or any kind of way to keep us and hinder us from what we're supposed to do and crunching out what God is wanting to do in us or keeping us from being able to get into that place with the Lord where we need to be in that place of being filled. But the truth of the matter is, is every power of darkness is underneath the feet of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Those who boast in evil, the enemy who boasts in himself, who tries to do these things to the people of God, he will see destruction. He will see disaster coming upon him in the name of Jesus. That is the word of God. That is the word of God because God hates evil. God hates evil, but he loves what is good and he loves the righteous and his eyes are upon the righteous. And we will only see with our eyes, we'll be awestruck at the way that God deals with the enemy. So God, we put our hope and our trust in you. We rely on you, Father God. We thank you, God, that you are a righteous king and that vindication and vengeance are yours. We thank you, God, that you vindicate those who put their hope and trust in you. We thank you, Father God, that we can put our hope and trust in your unending and unfailing love. We thank you, Father God, hallelujah, that you are for us and not against us. 
We thank you, Father God, that you desire to cause us to rise above. And you see the stumbling blocks in the way the enemy is trying to come in front of us. But we take authority over every stumbling block. We take authority over every distraction. We take authority over every power of darkness, every spirit of divination that would try to come against us in the name of Jesus. And we decree blindness to every monitoring spirit that would try to come against us in order to launch attacks against us at an opportune moment. And we refuse the work of the enemy. We forbid it. We decree it destroyed, annihilated, and crushed by the power of the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father God, that every power must bow. Every knee must bow. And every tongue will confess that you are Lord. And we are here today, God, to say that you are Lord. You are our Lord. You are our righteous King. And we thank you, Father God, that your angel army is greater. Lord, you hold in your hands the world, God. You hold us in the palm of your hands. And your angels outnumber every power of darkness in the earth. And we praise you, God, that you are greater. Greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father God, but we come before you, God, in repentance for anything, any weaknesses in our lives. Any ways we step into the flesh, any ways that any cracks, any crevices, any fractures in our homes and our families and our lives and our minds and our hearts because of past experiences, because of things you're still working out of us, God, we thank you that you are gracious, God, and that you are a merciful God, and that your mercy is new every morning, and that your love is never ending. We thank you, Father God, that your mercy triumphs over judgment. And we even pray, Father God, for mercy of those who work against us. We pray for your mercy, God, because you cover us in your mercy. We pray for mercy, Father God, but we know, Lord, that there is no mercy for the devil. There is no mercy for the powers and the principalities that are demonic. There is no mercy, God, so we ask for your fire, God. We ask for your fire, God, to burn up and break every chain that the enemy has used against us, where the enemy has spied on us, Lord God, where the enemy has spied so he can try to put chains and strongholds in our lives, God. We refuse the work of the enemy in Jesus' name. We forbid it in the name of Jesus, and we say enough is enough, and we ask, God, that you would stand up and defend us, Lord God, as we take our place in you and humble ourselves and say, we need you, God. We need you, God. We ask that you would release, Father God, more of your Holy Spirit, more of your sanctifying power, more of your more of your resurrection power that you would consecrate us even greater god especially in this season lord that you would release father god the power of your holy spirit to flow in our lives like a river to flood us father god forward into your throne room lord in prayers in thanksgiving in praise in supplication god that you would help us to build up our most holy faith in you father god that you would empower us holy spirit again to keep persevering to keep pushing through to keep moving forward we thank you, God, that you are an all-knowing God, that you see everything. Lord, help us in the mighty name of Jesus to be quick, quick in our spirits, God, to catch what is going on in the spirit. Lord, let us not be dull. And whatever might be dulling us in our lives, Father God, whatever might be dimming our eyes or our ears from hearing and seeing you, Lord, we ask that you would reveal and expose those things. And I even ask right now, God, that you would release a gift of the discerning of spirits in our lives. And if we have that gift already, Lord, sharpen it. Sharpen it in us, Lord God. Sharpen us, God. Quicken our spirits, God, so we can stay caught up with you and we're not missing anything, Lord. We thank you, Father God, that you reveal what you want to reveal to us at your perfect time. We thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. We just give you all honor and glory. We thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Because, you know, here's the deal. We all have weaknesses. We all have things that God is constantly working out of us. And as long as we're willing to surrender and humble ourselves, humble ourselves and work with God, he keeps working in us. But he resists the proud. But he, he, he gives more grace to the humble. Right? That's the word of God. And so we have to stay in a place where we're humbling ourselves. We have to cultivate fruit through a lifestyle of repentance. John Baptist said, bear much fruit. I think it was him. Bear much fruit with keeping with repentance. And that's what we need to do. And I saw that in a vision today. I saw that today. God's fire is there to break every chain, to burn 
up every chain because those chains are bondages from the enemy and those bondages can become strongholds but God's fire is greater. His holy fire is greater and it's those things that the enemy, especially in seasons like now, he'll sit there and try to look for your weaknesses and really it's a really crappy move of him to try to do that but the enemy doesn't fight fair. He doesn't play fair and he doesn't care. He wants to find your weaknesses. He wants to find your weaknesses through monitoring spirits. Satanic agents are hired. They're hired by the enemy to do that. That's what they do and the enemy sits there and and wants to try to do those things and play on our weaknesses to try to launch attacks at us but you know what the truth of the matter is is when we continue to seek God when we continue to seek God and we continue to love God and put him first and let him sanctify us and consecrate us that's what matters that's what matters. God's there to break God's there to break those chains, right? And you know, that's the narrow way. That's the narrow way. As we let God, Jesus Christ, what he did become, we let Jesus become the holy fire in us that burns off those chains, that burns off the shaft, that burns off the impurities, that burns off all those things that keep us in bondage or that are struggles. Maybe you're not in bondage. Maybe you've been delivered from a lot of things, but there still could be struggles or fleshly weak moments. God's fire burns those things and Jesus becomes that bridge. Jesus becomes our bridge into the narrow way. And and that's what the narrow way is. It's, it's not being religious. It's not being religious saying I have to do X, Y, and Z all the time and I have this method and I have to do all these things like the Pharisees and the Sadducees. I gotta obey every rule and I have to do all these things and I'll be holy and perfect. No, you're already holy because you have Jesus. But the difference is, is, is surrender. It's surrender and being humble. And the narrow way is when you are being, letting God's fire burn those impurities and burn those things out of you and deliver you. That causes you to be in the narrow way. It causes you to come off the path, the broad path of destruction and into the narrow way. The narrow way is a lifestyle of consecration and sanctification. It's not religious, legalistic, rigorous schedules. It's, that's not what it is. And, and we don't want to have open doors to the enemy, but God's grace is sufficient and the blood of Jesus is greater and covers us. But we need to press into prayer and continuing in repentance. And sometimes we just need to push back the darkness and just decree that a greater thing, that God is greater. Jesus is greater and he's got our backs and we decree and declare that we are flourishing olive trees in the house of God always in the name of Jesus Christ and no matter what our God is greater and his grace is sufficient for us in the mighty name of Jesus we decree that God's grace is sufficient for us and I just can't get past this we are flourishing olive trees in the house of God and we will stand in that place decree that over yourself right now I feel the power of God on that so strongly you are a flourishing olive tree in the house of God and that is where you will stand and you will not be moved you will not be shaken you will not be deterred you will not be derailed you will not be put asunder because you are a flourishing olive tree in the house of God hallelujah amen amen that is where we stand that is our declaration today that the no power power of the enemy could ever overcome us because Jesus Christ who's in us has raised us from the dead and has translated us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light and that's our truth and that's our identity and that's what we decree and declare today so no matter what's going on this witchcraft season we decree that God is greater God is bigger every plan of the enemy fails in the mighty name of Jesus every monitoring spirit is blinded permanently and cast out of our house and out of our lives in the name of Jesus Christ Christ, and that God is for us and those who are against us will see the hand of God in the name of Jesus. They will see the hand of God divinely intervening in our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uroba Sandrakia Tarabasha. And God, I ask right now that you would just release God. Release God, your warring angels. Release God, your holy fire hedge of protection around everyone who's listening. Release Father God your angel armies to surround everyone on this broadcast.
that's listening in the name of Jesus cover us in your blood oh God we thank you and praise you and we glorify your name because you God are king of kings and lord of lords and that is how it shall stand forever and ever amen and amen hallelujah all right hallelujah I feel a release now that uh, that was good I thank you Lord I thank you Lord for being with us thank you God for being with us to give you all honor and glory God God help us to continue on the rest of this week and this weekend Father God and whatever you you bring us to Lord God that you bless and, and prosper the work of our hands and cause us to succeed cause us to continue to be victorious in you God help us to have wisdom Father God and understanding give us a place in the space and the time to come alone with you Father God and let you just build us up in that secret place in that intimate place that you would release father god an overflowing river within us from your holy spirit to empower us and to keep our minds in your truth i ask that you would release that god release the flood release the flood of your holy spirit bursting up blowing blowing forth in us lord god i pray even right now your ruach your ruach your breath of life to breathe upon everyone who's listening right now gotta pray for your ruach to just breathe upon everyone right now and bring life, bring life, bring life, bring life, bring life, Holy Spirit. Bring new life, bring life. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. That's all the time I have for today, guys. I gotta go. But uh, I thank you for joining me. I hope that this has blessed you. I hope you feel better. I hope you feel encouraged and built up. And just, just remember, just stay strong. Keep moving forward. Stay in a place of prayer and stay in the word of God. And until next time, and, and maybe look forward to next week, I'm hoping to have a teaching out. I'm working on it, teaching how to supercharge your walk. And so look for that. And until next time, God bless.